Good day. This is Bennett, also known as Jeremiah. Today we're going to deal with the type of question that says, for which values of k will f at x equals to k have two unequal positive roots? This is the type of question that bothers a lot of students, and a lot of teachers don't have enough time to deal with this type of questions because of the pressure they're under. If you're interested in similar type of questions, the playlist is found at the end of this video. It is also found right here on the top right of the screen at the suggested video. So let's begin. All right, here is the first question. The first question is just like nature of roots. So they give you the equation of f and you've got a y-intercept of negative 5 and a turning point of 1 is to negative 7. And they asked, for which values of k will f at x equals to k have equal roots? Let me give an understanding of equal roots, then we'll proceed to the question. All right, let me show you an example with this particular graph, for instance. Let's just say we have a graph that says y is equals to x squared minus 2x plus 1. We know that x intercept y is equals to 0. If we make y 0, we're going to end up having to factorize this in order to solve for x. So we're going to have two brackets. So we're going to have x here and x here. And then it's going to be minus 1 and minus 1. So our answers, our roots are going to be x is equals to 1 or x is equals to 1. So now notice that we have the same answer appearing twice. So these are your roots. In other words, because they're the same, your roots are equal. So whenever you've got one answer, that answer will appear twice, meaning that your roots will be equal. So whenever there is one answer, this means that there is only one x-intercept. So whenever you have got equal roots, it means that there is only one x-intercept since there's one answer. So let me demonstrate to you how the graph looks like. This is how the graph will look like. So notice that it has got only one x-intercept since it has got equal roots. So whenever there is only one answer, that answer will appear twice. So always memorize that whenever there are equal roots, there is only one x-intercept. Or whenever there is only one x-intercept, the roots are equal. Just before we go to the actual question, let's just talk about this particular graph as well. Let's just say we've got y is equals to x squared minus 5x plus 6. So if we want to find the x-intercept, we know that x-intercept y is equals to 0. So if we replace y with 0, we'll end up having to factorize this particular portion. So then we'll have two brackets as well. This is going to be x and this is going to be x. And then we're going to have 3 and 2. And the sign of the middle number always goes to the bigger number. So then this is going to be a minus. And then this is going to also be minus. Because it has to give you positive at the end. So this is going to be x is equals to 3 or x is equals to negative 2. So these are going to be your roots. Notice that your roots are not the same this time. So your roots are unequal. Let me demonstrate to you how this graph will look like as well. This is how the graph will look like. Notice that there are two roots, right? Two unequal roots. One is negative and the other one is positive. So whenever your graph has unequal roots, this is how the graph will look like. It will have two different x-intercepts. Whenever your graph has equal roots, it means there's going to be only one x-intercept and this is how the graph will look like. So there's going to be only one x-intercept. So, always remember this situation. Whenever there are unequal roots, there are two different x-intercepts. Whenever there are equal roots, there is only one x-intercept. Alright, given that understanding, let's get back to the question. So, we have got a y-intercept of negative 5 and we have got a turning point of 1 is to negative 7. So, whenever you encounter this type of question where they ask you for which values of k will f at x equals to k have equal roots, your attention must be on the y value of the turning point. So, now notice that the y value of the turning point is negative 7. Now, notice that if I shift this graph 7 units upwards, it now has equal roots because it now has one x-intercept. So, whenever I shift it the same number of units as the y value of the turning point, it now has one x-intercept. So, the shift will be positive 7 because it has to shift 7 units upwards so that it can have one x-intercept. So, let's get back to the question. Now, notice that they said f at x must be equals to k. 
so you make f at x equals to k so f at x is this equation and the state must be equals to k so we'll take this and equate it to k since f at x must be equals to k so it means that you will say 2x squared minus 4x minus 5 must be equals to k and then the next thing you'll do is to take k to the other side of the equation so when you take k to the other side of the equation you'll end up having 2x squared minus 4x minus 5 minus k is equals to 0 so you always have to take k to this side of the equation now notice that this will represent your vertical shift so we have already agreed that our shift is positive 7 so it means you'll take exactly what you see here and you'll equate it to positive 7 since our shift is 7 unit upwards so just remember that you should take exactly what you see here if it is positive k you take positive k and you equate it to the shift if it is negative k you take negative k and you equate it to the shift so if it was positive k this would have been our final answer but because it is negative k we have to divide both sides by negative 1 and our answer will end up being k is equals to negative 7 so there we have it we have solved the first question so let's attempt a completely different question before we move on to the high level all right here is another question so we're given that f at x is equals to negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 5 and we're asked for which values of k will f at x equals to k have equal roots so we're given that the y-intercept is positive 5 and the turning point is 1 is 2 7 so again since they're asking about equal roots it means that our focus must be on the y value of the turning point so now notice that if i shift this graph seven units downwards it now has one x intercept meaning that it now has equal roots so it means that our shift must be seven units downwards so our shift is negative seven so our steps must be negative seven because it has to shift seven unit downwards this time so in the question they said f at x must be equals to k since they said f at x must be equals to k we'll take this equation and we'll equate it to k since f at x must be equals to k so it means that we'll say negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 5 must be equals to k so we'll take k to the other side of the equation as usual so we'll say negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 5 minus k must be equals to 0 so this represents our vertical shift and we already agreed that the shift must be negative 7 so it means we'll take exactly what we see here with the sign we'll take exactly what we see and we equate it to negative 7 if it was positive we'll make it positive but because it is negative we'll take it as it is and equate it to the shift so when we divide both sides by negative 1 we'll end up with k is equals to 7 and there we have it now let's move on to a higher level the one that bothers a lot of students in the exam just before i continue if you want to be treated whether it is online or physically whether it is the situation where you are struggling in maths or whether it is the situation where you're good in maths but want perfection take a screenshot or save these details whether you're studying cambridge which is the uk curriculum or whether you're studying nsc which is the south african curriculum or IEB or native courses which start from N1 to N6 or any curriculum you're doing no matter which country you're at, we offer tutorials. We've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week. We also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvement. All right, here is the next level. So we're given the equation of F and we're given the y-intercept of negative five and the turning point of one is to negative seven. And we're asked for which values of K well, f at x equals to k have two unequal positive roots. Let me show you an understanding of two unequal positive roots, then we'll proceed to the question. This particular graph, for instance, has two unequal positive roots. Remember, your roots are your x-intercept. So this, of course, the first thing you're aware of is that there are two unequal roots. Whenever the graph has two x-intercepts, 
they are two unequal roots. This x value is positive and this x value is positive and they're both different. So therefore we have got two unequal positive roots. All right, given that understanding, let's get back to the question. So notice that we have a y-intercept of negative 5 and we have a turning point of 1 is to negative 7. So our goal is to have two unequal positive roots. The problem at the moment is that we have got two unequal roots but one of them is negative and the other one is positive. We want both of them to be positive. So in the previous situation they asked for equal roots and our attention was on the y value of the turning point. This time, they're asking for two unequal positive roots. So, this time when you're asked for unequal positive roots, your attention must be on the y value of the turning point and the y-intercept this time. So, so far we have got our y-intercept as negative 5. So, if I shift it 5 unit upwards, notice that one of the x-intercept is now at the y-axis. So, we now have one zero root and one positive root. Before we had one negative root and one positive root. Now we have one zero root and one positive root. So now notice if I shift it greater than five units or more than five units, it now has two positive roots. So whenever I shift it more than five units upwards, it now has two positive roots. So notice we are allowed to shift it more than 5 units. Whenever we shift it more than 5 units upwards, it now has 2 positive roots. But notice what will happen if I shift it 7 units upwards. If I shift it 7 units upwards, it now has only 1 x-intercept. In other words, it has equal roots. And that's not what we want. We wanted it to be 2 unequal positive roots. So, from this we can see that we are allowed to shift it more than 5 units upwards. But we are not allowed to shift it up to 7 units upwards because it will end up having one real root. So, therefore the shift must be between 5 and 7. So, this time the shift is between 5 and 7. So, to summarize it, your shift will always be between the y value of the turning point and the y-intercept. So, we are given this equation and we're told that f at x must be equals to k. So, we'll simply say 2x squared minus 4x minus 5 must be equals to k. And when we take it to the other side of the equation, we'll now have negative k. is equals to 0. So, this represents the vertical shift. And remember we said our shift must be between 5 and 7. So in other words, our shift must be more than 5, but it must be less than 7. Because if it becomes 7, then the equation no longer has two unequal roots. But anyways, the inequality sign should always face like this. So you should not worry about how you put the inequality signs. They should always face this direction. When you write down your answers, you will always write it in this direction. And then we have to take exactly what is here and plug it in there. So now notice that if it was positive, we will just take what is there and just plug it there. And this would be the answer. But we've got a slight problem. It is negative. So, if it is negative, what should we do? Well, we'll put it exactly as it is, with the negative. Now, we have to solve for this stuff. Well, in algebra, whenever you've got negative, you know that you have to divide everything by negative. So, you literally have to divide everything by negative. And when you divide everything by negative, you're going to end up having it as negative 5. So, you're going to have negative 5. So you have negative 5 and then the sign of the inequality will change so it will now face the other side so you have negative 5 then you have this then you have that then you have negative 7 so at the moment this is the situation that we have so what do we do because the inequality signs are not allowed to face like this every time you write to inequality signs they should always face this direction so what should you do well what you will do is that the first thing is 
this will come to this side and this one will come to this side so you switch places so minus 7 will come to this side and then minus 5 will go to the other side so notice that I've just switched places so the next thing that you'll do is that you will now put the inequality signs back to the way they were supposed to be so this is what happens so every time you have the inequality signs facing the other way all you have to do is just to switch this to and change the inequality signs back to normal and that is what we have so this is our final answer all right here is another question just before we attempt this question if you're interested in knowing the prices of the tutorials the video that contains the prices and the updated contact details just in case these ones have changed is found at the end of this video so you're given f at x is equals to negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 5. So as you can see on the graph, the y-intercept is at positive 5 and the turning point is 1 is to 7. So we have an equal root, but the problem is one is negative and the other one is positive. Our goal is to have two unequal positive roots. So notice that if I shift this 5 unit, then what? It now has one zero root and one positive root. And if I shift it more than five units down, it now has two positive roots. So as you can see, it has two positive roots. So whenever I shift it more than five units, it has two positive roots. So notice that it shouldn't shift until seven units downwards. If it shifts until seven units downwards, it now has equal roots, which is not what we want. So, in other words, it is allowed to shift more than 5 units downwards, but it is not allowed to shift up to 7 units downwards. So, the shift is between negative 5 and negative 7. So, I want you to notice something when it comes to the numbers. Notice that this adjusts the y value of the turning point and the y intercept. Remember, when it comes to the situation of two unequal positive roots, your attention must be on the y value of the turning point and the y intercept. So, your shift is between 5 and 7, but you'll make both of them negative. The reason why both of the steps are negative is because we're talking about a downward shift. So the shift is between negative 5 and negative 7. So you will write negative 7 and negative 5 because it's always the smaller one first and the bigger one next. And the arrows will always be facing this direction. So we know that it has to be between negative 7 and negative 5. And the arrows are always facing that way. So, so far we're given that f at x is equal to this stuff and f at x must be equal to k. So, in other words, we have to say negative 2x squared minus 4x minus 5 must be equal to k. And when we take k to the other side of the equation, we'll end up having negative k is equal to 0. So, that's what we have. So, in other words, we know that the shift must be between negative 5 and negative 7. This part represents the shift, so we'll put it right there. Now notice that if it was positive k, we would have put positive k, and this would have been the final answer. But because we have negative, we have to use a step further. So now notice we're going to have negative. So now we know that already we have to divide everything by negative. So when we divide everything by negative, it means that we're going to have 7, and then the sign of the inequality will change. And then we're going to have k, and then we're going to have 5. But what do you think? We leave it like this? No, we're not allowed to leave it like this. So we'll switch. So it means 5 will come this side, and 7 will come over there. And then this is what we'll have. And then the sign of the inequality will get back to normal. Because whenever k is between, the inequality sign should always be facing like this. And this is what we have. So this is our final answer. All right, I have included the playlist on similar type of questions. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Any questions you've got or any video you want me to create, please comment below. See you in the next video.